Okay, here we are, people. All right. So today, I'm going to, to work on uh, the lab of rust from the Linux Foundation portal. Rust lab. And uh, should be fine. I did not launch um, the um, digital ocean um, uh, environment because uh, I don't want to spend time sitting up one and uh, voila. So we'll just do the next part. Okay, that could seem pull that way. Okay, should be okay. Just checking some stuff before setting up the screen on this. So, where is the screen? One, nine, laptop. Here we go. Welcome to Lunch Lab Environment. But it won't last long on this page because I'm not doing the. the digital ocean account because it's taking too long and I don't want to remember to close it in any case blah 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 okay so we'll do next part which is a lab exercise Getting started with Rust. So this is saying, when accessing external URLs embedded in the PDF below, always use right click and open in a new tab or window. Attempting to open the URL by directly clicking on it will close your course with window. They are very, very nice to say this explicitly. <laughs> First time I see this anywhere. I know, yeah, that's not the beginning. I was uh, so here we are. Training in certification lab getting started with rest of our views. This lab exercise was obtained in number two, twenty two, zero two instance. I've got this. Some comments such as package installation may be different depending on the operating system in use. But otherwise, this step should work on other flavors of Linux with minimal edits. So 
the prompt uh, is used to for simplicity in the labs. Your prompt may be different depending on where. Your run is a command, perhaps something like blah blah blah. Whatever. I will install the rest because I think I did not. I had to uninstall it. Um, so we'll check if it's actually safe. In Ubuntu 20, uh, 22.04 like then. What's the actual command to check? Yeah, it's not down. You know you can find it normally somewhere around. Read installation. So we do rest up. Yes, blah blah blah. Oh, you can do rest. Uh, what do they say? You have to have curl. I don't know if I have curl in it. Yeah. Yes, Monty. I do. This will download and install the ocean compiler for the rest of the language and expect it on the job. This can be modified with the rest of home or government variable. Here. But, uh, I need to look at something quick. So yes, whatever. Um, proceed with the installation, custom or. To read the question, it's not necessary. Great, um, this is installed now. To get started, you may need to restart. Uh, 
A ja schon. To configure your current shell run, source home, tweak, tweak. You just to check. You see. I go here. Do I need to? So, what part of it is installed? It's cargo, but that's. Yeah, if you Finding a path in case of system and source needs to be overwritten, export path. There is a way to add it quickly. I just wanna, I know I have to restart the thing, but uh, just, just to. Ah, oh, no, okay. So it's there anyway. I want to check me. Um, damn it. I don't know. You see, now it's under. I don't want it to be under. What am I doing? It's like the... Okay, cool, so... So you get this, you get the duck, clippy, cargo, rest format. Standard. Memory. Just a bit of...
Yeah, I didn't do that, but uh, we can. <laughs> what did I do? Oh, la la, I believe. It's already up to date since I just had to told it. Huh? We can tap this exam and check and it's beautiful. Look at this. And then we can start to create a new project. That is the case of Phoenix Foundation. So the goal here is to create to make what's the goal here? Yes, I guess. Yeah. To, to make a project in Rust. What are we doing? Can we see? There is no outline of what's gonna happen. Ah oh, yes, if I click here, I must have a way to see. No, it's just a page. It's not possible! This is kind of sad. I'm sorry, I'm screaming in the mic. Get started with Carbo. So that's what we've done. Now we can create a new project. All right. Have a new uh, F project. What's the name of the course already? It's set somewhere like in the lab. It must be somewhere. I didn't have done the thing. It's like yeah, if I have one thousand something. Yeah. Where is it already? Yeah. I wasn't to Okay. So we can see, we can see, it's uh, there.
So let's go inside. So there's nothing but the sour, the tomel, and the git thingy. Is it already set? Let me see what's up. I need to keep and throw this heat in my hand while it's still hot. Target, okay. So we've got the version, the edition, and you want zero dependencies yet. And the main, which is the low world. There's nothing here. Huh? So you do that, and then you do that, and you get this. <laughs> oh yeah, so this is what they did. So if you build the project then you can see it. This is this will compile the project from the root uh, with it. Yes, like is main. So this won't work. Um, is it what you do? You know, it's I think you cannot do it like that. I don't know why. What's happening? This, this is not a common cargo build. Of course. Um, Snake keys. <laughs> uh, I think he changed the name from here. Fuck me. How do I change the name from here? Well, just uh, you think. <laughs> Maybe just to effacer and recommencer, I'm just going to delete all and start again. Just, I don't know, just in package, you can change in package, of course you can. Oh my gosh, so... Okay. 
So rum. So what now? So if you do uh, have one, it's running hello world. Lala. With Verbosity, with more Verbosity, and with more, more Verbosity. There are several opinions on the best way to format code for readability, usually centered around personal experience preference. The various format command can be used to show and update formatting. I don't think it's doing anything.
здесь как бы сам это давайте сетсим это голову как бы надо все знаем What are you talking about? So it's not... It's already up to date since we are here. Uh... Oh, yeah. And this is not there. I think I did it that way, I don't know, if it's a lot. Okay. What am I writing? This is what you say. I don't know, my goodness. I'm not a game. I'm not a game. Oh, fuck. I forgot to write. Right. Wait a side. 
하나 y s s because I was inside the, the director I didn't do work with that. And pass the current tree, which has the target on the front. And I see if you know that if you do this. Okay, it's not doing what I thought it would. Cause you need a And this is the end. Okay. I uh, will keep this tab open and do it for a moment of time. Uh, where was I? Where was I? I have not seen this one, but I thought I did it. Okay, I need to do this one.
Oh, so we need to change the title. Oh, yeah, no, it's fine because I did it. Just slab it. Uh. It's too long. So, this course uh, is about... Oh yeah, I guess you cannot talk about the kernel without talking about Linus Torvald. <coughs> so, Linux created by Linus Torvald 26 years ago as a hobby project has become the world uh, the world's largest and most pervasive open source software project in the history of computing. Uh, yep. Linux kernel is the largest component of the Linux ecosystem and is charged with managing the hardware, running other programs and maintaining the security and integrity of the whole system. Over 13,000 kernel developers from around the world have contributed to the Linux kernel. It is a 24-hour day. Seven days a week, 365 days a year development process that results in a new release once every 9 to 10 weeks. Along with several stable and extended stable releases, at all times, new development and current release integration cycles run in parallel. New developers often struggle to find a way to productively engage with the Linux community. LFD 103 is designed for anyone interested. Oh. You must drink. It's designed for anyone interested in becoming a Linux kernel developer and contributor. The course aims to ease the Linux kernel mentorship application process. It also serves as a resource for developers from companies and communities that might not be able to take advantage of the mentorship program and want to learn kernel development on their own, as well as a resource for experienced engineers new to open source and upstream kernel development that are tasked with working with the kernel community. In a nutshell, my motivation is to empower new and experienced engineers to learn to work with the kernel community and become productive members of the community. I'm hoping this course will help demystify the kernel development process by making it easily accessible to, to developers from diverse backgrounds. Tracking Linux Foundation 
fellow inexperienced Linux kernel developer, maintainer, and contributor. Hello, D113, and for this is the developer to the Linux kernel development process and teaches implicit, the explicit and implicit rules of the road. <laughs> It covers configuring a development system, git basic script, writing uh, kernel patches, testing patches, writing commit, commit logs, sending patches. I'm working on feedback from the kernel community. So the course uh, will be about Thank you will learn to select and configure the development system, provide an overview of Linux kernel repository and releases, understand the basics, checking out kernel repos and working with them, build your first kernel and install it. I look forward to this. Understand the Linux kernel contributor content, code of conduct. Familiarize yourself with the Linux kernel enforcement statements, write kernel patches and test them. Understand the do's and don'ts of the communication with the kernel community. Mm -hmm. You know who to and how to send patches it. Checks patch.pl and get maintainers.pl. What is pl? Plan? Uh, patch length? <laughs> I don't know. Rework patches and act on feedback from reviewers. Meet your instructor, Shui King. Hello. Shui King is a Linux kernel fellow at the Linux Foundation. She's a client Linux kernel developer, maintainer, and contributor. She maintains the kernel self test framework. USB over IP driver and CPU power, and is an active contributor to the Linux media subsystem. She has also contributed to in and out machine. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Memory management in ETH. Sure. Mm -hmm. And DMA's area, this. Um, in addition, she's helping with stable release kernel testing. She publishes blogs on Linux kernel topic on her blog site. Mm -hmm. There is quite a long look at this bar. Ah.
So it's showing us the path that takes the node. And everything, that's cool, I like these things. Graphs. So, okay, cool. She has presented the several Linux conference and Linux kernel developer keynote panels. She served on the Linux Foundation Technical Advisory Board. She authored Linux kernel testing and debugging paper. Paper. <laughs> paper. Published in the Linux Journal and wrote several Linux Journal kernel news articles. She's passionate about monitoring and helping new developers. She does sharing her knowledge and expertise in her blog talks and articles. She leads the Linux kernel mentorship program at the Linux Foundation to help add new and diverse talent into the Linux kernel community, which will benefit the Linux ecosystem that depends on the Linux kernel. Cool. Of course, there are some requirements. So I'm interested in becoming a Linux kernel. Well, yeah, sure, one day <laughs> when, when I have this. We can see la 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 sure for support um one god way and I give Peter doing these courses. Yeah, the qu class forum. Yeah, sure, this is the same. I think this card is everywhere in each course. Or it's, if it's not, it should. Course timing. This course is entirely self paced. <laughs> yeah, you've got one year to do the thing once so you click the button on. Well, this is crazy. I just noticed that yesterday. That's amazing, I mean. Because uh, some of us. All of us probably don't have time to do anything in life. In order to make it easier to distinguish the various types of content in the course, we use the color coding and formatting blue. Dark blue text type at the common line, green output, black file content, brown file dark names, light blue print. You may also notice that boxes with different icons. The purpose, the purpose of each is clarified below. So the box additional course documentation, the bubble, the, the light bulb, <laughs> additional information, important information, the red flag, think explore with the the zoom in icon or <laughs> something like the magnifier. External resources when this is a book. Links mm -hmm. Foundation, all rights reserved. It's a big C.
after the training material provided and developed by the Linux Foundation is connecting in connection with the training service. These are protected by copyright and other intellectual property rights. And you can read this if you may. Next foundation. Uh, okay, okay. Provider provides a neutral, trusted hub for developers to cool, manage, and scale open technology projects. Founded in 2000, the Linux Foundation is supported by more than 1,000 members and is the world's leading home for, for collaboration on open source software, open standards, open data, and open hardware. The Linux Foundation methodology focuses on leveraging best practices and addressing the needs of contributors, users, and solution providers to create sustainable models for open collaboration. The Linux Foundation hosts Linux, the world's largest and most pervasive open source software project in history. It is also home to Linux Creator Linux Torvald and lead maintainer Craig Crowe-Hartman. The success of Linux has catalyzed growth in the open source community, demonstrating the commercial commercial efficacy of open source and inspiring countless new projects across all industries and levels of the technology stack. As a result, the Linux Foundation today hosts for more than Linux. It is an umbrella for many critical open source projects that power our corporations today. Spanning virtually all industry sectors, some of the technologies we focus on include big data and analytics, networking, embedded system and IoT, web tools, cloud computing, edge computing, automotive, security, blockchain, and many more. Thank you for being here. This is great. Linux Foundation events uh, over. Oh, 85,000 open source technologies and leaders worldwide gather at Linux Foundation events and you need to share ideas, learn and collaborate. And Linux Foundation events are the meeting place of choice for the open source maintainers, developers, architects, infrastructure managers and sysadmin and technologies leading open source program offices and other critical leadership functions. These events are the best place to gain visibility within the open source community, quickly in advance open source development, work by forming connection with the people evaluating and catching the next generation of technology. They provide a forum to share and gain knowledge, help organization and identify. Help organization identify software trends early to improve future technology investment. Connect employers with talents and showcase technologies and services to influential open source professional media and analysts around the globe. So um, the Linux Foundation hosts an increasing number of events each year, including Open Source Summit North America, Europe, and Japan. Embedded Linux Conference North America and Europe, Open Networking and Edge Summit, CapCon, Clan Con North America, Europe, and China, Automotive Linux Summit, KVM Forum. Linux Storage File System and Memory Management Summit, Linux Security Summit, North America and Europe. Where is it in Europe? Linux Kernel Maintainer Summit, Linux Foundation Member Summit. I wonder what they talk about at this one. 
Open complaint. <coughs> Open complaint and submit. And minimal. The Linux Foundation's training is for the community, by the community and features instructors and content streets from the leaders of the Linux developer community. The Linux Foundation offers several types of training, classroom, online, on-site, event-based. Advantages receive Linux and open source software training that is distribution that is distribution flexible, technically, technically advanced, and created with the actual leaders of the Linux and open source software development community themselves. Woo! The Linux Foundation courses give attendees the broad foundational knowledge and networking needed to thrive in their career today. We use our online or in-person training, the Linux Foundation classes, classes can keep you or your developers ready in the curve of um, an open source essential. The Linux Foundation training offerings. Our current of course offering include Linux programming and development training, enterprise. Are we going into? Uh, open source complaints course, get information, that's da, 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 da. cool, cool, cool. The Linux Foundation certification gives you a way to differentiate yourself in the job market that's hungry for your skill. We've taken a new innovative approach to new to open source certification. that allows you to showcase your skill in a way that other peers will respect and employers will trust. You can take your certification and exam from any computer, anywhere, at any time. That's amazing! The certification exams are either performance-based or multiple choice. Uh, the exams are distribution flexible. The exams are up-to-date testing knowledge and skills that actually matter in today's IT environment. Okay, last training certification firewall. The Linux Foundation has two separate training divisions, course delivery and certification. These two divisions are separated by firewall. The Curriculum Development and Maintenance Division of the Linux Foundation Training Department has no direct role, no direct role in developing, administrating, administering, la, or grading certification exam. Enforcing the self-imposed firewall ensures that independent organizations and companies can develop third party training material geared toward helping test takers. That's just fixed. Okay. Furthermore, it ensures that there are no secret tips or secrets in the general that one needs to be familiar with in order to succeed. It also permits the Linux Foundation to develop a very robust set of courses that do far more than teach the test. It rather equip attendees with a broad knowledge of the many areas they may need be required to master to have a success successful career in open source system administration. Thank you for the thought. So, <laughs> introduction to Linux kernel development process. In this, uh, in this chapter, You, you will, we will provide another view of the Linux and development process and we will learn our small incremental changes, patches, Oops. so this is a meaning for patches, sent to mailing list, get included, included, 
Mise upstream kernel. Learning objectives. And by the end of this chapter, you should be able to understand how the kernel, the Linux kernel, is developed. Discuss the Linux kernel release, cycle and merge window, discuss active kernel releases, explain the concept of kernel trees. And we've got text to welcome us. About the Linux kernel. The Linux kernel is the result of a collaborative development effort from developers across the globe. Small incremental changes, also known as patches, add new features, make enhancements, and fix bugs. It is 24 hours, 7 days a week, and 365 days a continuous development process that results in a new release once every two months and several stable Linux developers. We have read that before. We have read that. A new release comes out once every 10 to 11 weeks. And there is no set date for these releases. So, what does so the release cycle look like? Like that. While this kernel development is a continuous process, a certain point, <laughs> at certain point during the development, when a set of features and bugs fixes are ready, a new version of the kernel is released. This new version are called. Yeah, 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 okay. Uh, just read. Linux Tervals releases a new kernel and opens a two week merge window. During this merge window, he pulls code for the next release from subsystem maintainers. Subsystem maintainers send same git pull request to Linux either during the merge window. Really? He's still managing this thing, like today? Is he the only one to be able to sign on the next merge? I don't think it is the case. Okay, okay, just read. Release the new... During this merge window, he pulls code from... Subsystem maintainers. Subsystem maintainers send signed git pool request to Linux either during the merge window or before. All major and new development is added to the kernel during the merge window. 10,000 plus changing set patches get pulled into Linux 3 during these two weeks, at the end of which he releases the first release candidate known as RC1. At this point, the release cycle moves into a bug fixes only mode with a series of release candidates. So that's what it stands for. Yeah, makes sense. This is for Linux. Once a week after RC1 is released, RC2 comes out, RC3 comes out a week after, and so on. Until core major bugs, bug fixes, and regression, if any, are resolved. The new cycle begins with a three weeks quiet period, which started a week before the release. 
I continue through the two weeks merge window, maintainers and key contributors are busy getting their flow ready to send pull requests to us. Please note that the quiet period is informalized and each subsystem might handle it differently. This period is not well advertised and the developer might see a slow response from the community. Uh, if yeah, this is very verbose, as this is explaining thing, uh, an image can say, uh, explain thing, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Active kernel release. Release candidate or C release. These are mainline kernel pre-release that are used for testing new features in the mainline Vitex. We will talk about mainline very shortly. shortly. This release is must be compiled from the source. From source, kernel developers test these releases for bugs and regression stable. Releases are big fix only releases. After Linux releases of mainline kernel, it moves into stable mode. Any bug fixes for a stable kernel are backported from the mainline kernel and applied to stable git by a designed by a designated stable kernel releases maintainer. Designated. Stable kernel updates are released on average once a week or on an as needed basis. In the long term, releases are stable, releases selected for long term maintenance to provide critical bugs fix for older kernel trees. Stable releases are normally only maintained for a few mainline releases cycle unless they are marked as long term releases. LTR. A long term release, as the name suggests, is maintained for a long period of time or long period to allow multiple vendors collaborate on a specific kernel release that they plan on maintaining for an extended period of time. You can refer to the kernel archives for more details about the kernel. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Stable and long term releases. And the release is canon. Kernel trees, what are they? You have already heard about kernel trees and we have already mentioned the term in previous pages. The kernel code is organized in several main and subsystem git repos called trees. So, the main kernel tree. This kernel is maintained by Linux kernel. This is where Linux releases mainline kernels and RC releases. Stable tree. This is where the, this, tree, this tree is maintained by Greg Ra Atman. This tree consists of Stable releases branches, stable releases are based on, on this tree. Yeah. So next, X3. This is an integration tree maintained by Stephen Rothwell. Speak. Good. From a large number of subsystem trees get pulled into this tree periodically and then released the integration testing. The process of pulling changes from various trees catches merge conflicts, if any, between trees. One of my first actions as a maintainer was to request that my tree be added to Linux 
Next, after I committed, after I commit patches to my tree, I wait three to seven days before sending a pull request to Linus, giving enough time to find problems and regressions, if any. Patches applied to a tree, as that will be added to Linus next, are only for the next merge window, including during the merge window. Patches for the next release may be added to the next kernel. To Linux next after the merge window has closed and the RC1 candidate has been released by Linux. Okay. Subsystem maintainers. Each major subsystem has its own tree and designated maintainers. Subsystem may have multiple maintainers. You can find a list of subsystem and the maintainers in the maintainer file. Ooh. In the kernel source. In addition, almost every kernel subsystem has a mailing list. Please refer to the Linux kernel mailing list. And the list archives on low.kernel.org for a list of mailing lists and their archives. Archives are a great reference to for patches, discussions, and historic story of changes. Okay. There is nothing we can write <coughs> <laughs> Each major subsystem has its own tree in designated maintainers. The subsystem may have multiple maintainers. You can find a list of subsystem and the maintainers in the maintainers file in the kernel source. In addition, almost every kernel subsystem has a mailing list. Please refer to the Linux kernel mailing list in the archives if you may want to know about patch and the historic. This development process is itself happens entirely over email. Contributors send patches to mailing list through email and contributions are then discussed through email. Most maintainers send an email response to contributors. <coughs> Again, most maintainers send an email response to contributors saying applied to tree name uh, or thanks applied to contributors when they accept and commit patches. Some maintainers have a bot that will send patches applied notification with the patch included in them. Please refer to the kernel git repo for a list of kernel trees. Not all trees are, kernel, are on kernel.org. You can find subsystem git information and mailing list for each of the subsystem in the maintainer file.
Ah, okay, the quiz now. The patch is a small increment changes made to the kernel. The quiz period overlaps with the merge window. I suppose, yes. Well, because you have to wait for them to respond, so this is quiet. I suppose this is true. <laughs> yeah, okay. How long is the quiet period? Two weeks. Three weeks? Ah, it has multiple choice, I think. This is how it works. Look. But maybe it's not because it's not a lighting like before. How do you select it? The, what is what's the response? What's the what's the answer? Ah! What did I do before? So this is true. Have you? Yeah, I just clicked in the set code and something. So it doesn't do anything. There is a bug. I think there is a bug. MERC does this release before the main line release kernel. Can I know it? Quack, 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 I mean... Right, it depends. Depends of how many changes. I don't know. I think you might. Like I don't understand. Pourquoi il ne se light anymore? The maintainer has. Well, the maintainer file has information on, on who maintains a subsystem. You see, I just click here because there's two full of files and it's saying something. But on the other, it doesn't work. Several kernel and git repos are hosted on. Bah, yep. Yep, there is this one, which is not necessarily. I think you can find the repo from here, but it's not like. Look, uh, it's, it's not like this uh, glinky button. But I think it's an answer anyway. <laughs> okay. So this is answering my question from before. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. New features go into stable release. Well, after it's been approved and improved and improved. So I guess it's false. Okay. La la la, I'm so bad. Who gets it? No! I wanna know before! Stop! Go back! Oh la la! 
Oops. Oops. <laughs> oh my gosh. Where is it? How do I get back? I wanna know. Exit. Well, I was wrong. I need to know. My life is incomplete now. <laughs> this is terrible. People, help. Well, whatever. Changes to the kernel are normally called patch after the name of historical tool that works with incremental changes to a text file likely originated in the patch used in stitching a kilt or mending a piece of clothing. In this chapter, we will write down the patch into comment and talk about the purpose for each one of them. So, patches. By the end of this chapter, you'll be able to understand Git basics, work through. <sighs> discuss, discuss different patch components, patch commit logs, and tags. Uh, Linux kernel development is done using Git, which was started by Linux kernel and is currently maintained by Junior C. Amano to learn more about Git. Then uh, you can read a short story of Git and the Gitbook for details on how to use Git. Um, blah and blah and blah blah blah. Oh, okay, so there's more information. Developers send changes they want to see in the kernel to the kernel mailing list through email. These changes are called patches. Patches are small incremental changes made to the kernel. Each patch contains a change to the kernel that implements one independent modification that stands on its own. The patch cannot break the kernel build, requiring each patch to do one thing makes it easier to isolate, to isolate regressions. Reverting a problem patch becomes easier as well. Complex changes to the kernel are the split into smaller chunks. This, uh, as an example, if you were to find an ex existing compile component making code a, a code uh, change. You will fix it independently in a spirit path, in a spirit patch, instead of combining it with your code chain. Maintainer has their personal preferences on our granular their patch. Splitting should be for their subsystems. This is true for coding styles as well. Maintainers are good about giving feedback on their preferences during the patch review. What's in, in the patch? What is this? I think uh, 
we we'll take a break shortly. Because, because. It's important for your health. <laughs> You can take a look at a real commit on the next page. In the screenshot, we highlighted the individual component and we will walk through these individual components as well. We use git format patch 1, pretty fuller, and the name code of the commit. To, to generate the patch, you will see on the next page and get the complete information about this patch. So voilà quoi. Uh, I, I want to keep reading out loud every every word of these things. So uh, I will come back when I'm ready for it. Because in long enough I'm here. No one else and I had a long morning already. So let's go back soon to this. What can we do now? <laughs> Don't get distracted. Yes. Uh, I think I need to do this now because after. Why is Steamlab? Thank you for hanging out. I hope this helps. Because sometimes we just don't want to read stuff by ourselves. Tell me if I need to speak better. I'm sure my speaking skills need improvement. And so yeah, talk to me about life, code, music, whatever you like, game, making games. And uh, it will be good. I'm sure we will catch up. Um, yeah. So, see you soon. And 